Welcome in. My name is Jonathan Castorina, Business Development Director of the Dock Region. We're excited to be here today to talk to you about Bell and the Bell 525. Myself, along with my colleagues from Fort Worth, Texas, will take an exclusive look on the helicopter that we're excited to bring to the market. When evaluating the market potential for this size of helicopter, we established a customer advisory panel with experts from the industry to help us throughout the design process. When this process was put in place, we started from zero with a clean sheet of paper and ended up with a 9.3 ton, five bladed helicopter powered by two General Electric CT7 engines and a Garmin 5000H avionics suite. Suited to transport 16 and 19 passengers, depending on your mission requirements. The Bell 525 design team made it a priority to develop a technically advanced super medium helicopter that took a bold step forward in safety, reliability, and will be the first commercially certified fly-by-wire system. Let's get the tour started. One of the first things you may notice about the Bell 525 are the large windows and windshield. The reason why we have that is because we wanted the pilot to have the best view possible. So what we did to maximize the space on the helicopter is we ended up having one door for the pilots and the first row of passengers to enter through. In order to maximize the space as well, we invented an intuitive J-Track system for the seats for the pilots to have easy access for entry and exit. Now let's take a look inside and have a more in-depth look at the avionics system. Now that I'm sitting in the pilot chair, I want to show you about the Bell 525 flight controls. You'll notice the cyclic and collective flight controls are located on the armrests of the seats. We did this to provide pilots with flight controls that are ergonomically friendly and it allows the pilot to focus more on their mission. The flight controls are connected to a triple redundant fly-by-wire system, which replaces all the mechanical controls from a traditional helicopter design. When I say triple redundant, what that means is that each flight actuator has its own single generator and also flight control computer for extra redundancy and safety. But fly-by-wire technology is not new to Bell. This is our third generation fly-by-wire system that has evolved from our tilt rotor technology. Now let's go to Fort Worth, Texas, so I can introduce you to Troy Cadell, our experimental flight test pilot, and also Melissa Reinch, who's our supervisor of avionics so you can learn how the helicopter flies and our Garmin 5000H avionics system. Hello, I'm Troy Caudell. I'm the lead experimental test pilot for the Bell 525 program. Very early in the design phase, we spent a lot of time in the cockpit, focusing mainly on the human factors and the ergonomics aspects of the cockpit. One of the things that uh, came of that was the sidearm controllers. And I, I believe that reduces the pilot fatigue uh, significantly. It also enabled us to improve the viewability of the displays in, in the cockpit and that enabled us to lower the glare shield which provides an enhanced field of view for the aircrew. Fly-by-wire is one of the key aspects of the 525 program. With fly-by-wire you're, you're able to tune in a helicopter to fly however you want without extensive hardware or outer mold line uh, modifications. It also provides us with uh, envelope pr protection. The pilot can be looking outside and the aircraft will cue him on an approaching limit. We also have the three loop control all design. It enables us to provide many flight director functions embedded into the uh, control software which include speed, altitude, and hitting hold. The 525 flies like any other helicopter, only easier. With the control laws, we have decoupled the uh, typical mechanical coupling that you have in a regular helicopter, and it provides a single axis input for flying the helicopter. Lifting to a hover is very simple. All you have to do is raise the collective, and if you have the altitude hold on, it'll maintain position and altitude and hitting. For up and away flying, we also have an added safety feature called auto assist. In this mode, the helicopter will automatically lower the collective for the pilot and minimize the NR droop. It will also slow down and maintain nominal NR. 
We've tested auto assist uh, very extensively and we've developed the profiles uh, based on a single engine failure followed by the second engine failure. So we've tested out to 120 knots and uh, the system works perfectly. Fly-by-wire uh, also enables us to have various modes for flying. In the 525, the modes transition automatically for, you, for the pilot, and they are enunciated on the, on the PFD to inform the pilot of uh, the mode that you're in. The um, air-to-ground, ground-to-air, high-speed, low-speed, uh, turn coordination and hitting hold are all automatic. And again, they're uh, enunciated on the, on the PFD to inform the pilot of the mode he's in. The MFD, or the multifunction display, provides the capability to view the various systems on the aircraft. The MFDs are controlled by the GTC, or the Garmin Touch Controller, and is an integral part of the G5000H. To give a more thorough explanation of the G5000H, I'll hand it over to my colleague, Melissa. Thank you, Troy. My name is Melissa Reinch, and I'm the Avionics and Electrical Supervisor on the 525 program. I'm here to talk about the Avionics Suite, which is comprised of the Garmin G5000H. It's the brains behind the operation that really talks to the aircraft. It's comprised of 30 plus LRUs, and those LRUs talk to all the different systems on the aircraft and allow us to gather all the data we need to display it to the pilots on the glass cockpit in a thoughtful and intuitive manner um, to hopefully reduce the pilot workload. So before we get started, I want to kind of give you an overview of the glass cockpit that the 525 has. The glass cockpit is uh, comprised of four GDUs, the MFDs and the PFDs. You have two inboard MFDs or multifunction displays and two PFDs outboard um, primary function displays. And right now we're on the weather map. So you can see that we have the weather map. And if you look at our GTC here, you see that the 525 comes standard with the TCAS system and the HTAS system. So one of the things that makes the, air, the 525 unique is that we were able to declutter the cockpit with the electronic circuit breakers. So I'm gonna show those here on the display as well. There is quite a few circuit breakers on the aircraft, and one of the things that's really nice about the system here is that you can actually search for the unique, the unique circuit breaker that you're looking for. So I can search for any particular system and it'll jump directly to it. So if I wanted to search for the MFD, I would just type that in there, select it, and it will jump straight to the MFD where I can see that it is currently in, it's not pulled, it's pulling five amps. Now I've kind of gone over the basic aircraft functions, the, the system interfaces, and that's just a significant amount of data that the Garmin system is pulling in and we're displaying to the pilots. Thank you, Troy and Melissa, for your overview. Before I go to my next colleague, I would like to talk to you about something that we think would really resonate with our audience. Bell and Textron are making strides to reduce our carbon footprint, noise pollution, and also the overall impact on the environment to move towards a more sustainable future. The Bell 525 will be a difference maker to the environment. This helicopter will have a 30% reduction in fuel burn than other large helicopters in this segment, which will contribute to a 20% reduction of CO2 emissions per passenger mile. This helicopter will also have recyclable consumables, such as transmission oils and engine oils. We also use environmentally friendly corrosion inhibitors. The Bell 525 rotor design team actually made sure that this rotor design system would be quieter with five blades that are swept tipped and variable RPM. Preliminary test data has shown that this helicopter will be three decimals quieter than the other helicopters in this segment. Now let me go back to Fort Worth, Texas to my manager of avionics and safety, Christos Bias, to learn more about the rotor system. Hello everyone, my name is Christos Bias and I have been in the program since the very early days. From the very beginning, the program has been designed with a customer in mind. Safety and required redundancy, reliability and maintainability. My colleagues were explaining fly-by-wire and what it means to the pilot and the flight tech, but I want to talk a little bit about what it means to the aircraft. The 525 benefits from Bell's long lineage with advanced flight controls going back 35 years. So what is flight control systems on the 525? The 525 is, has a triplex architecture with three independent control channels. 
looking down again at the flight deck, you have redundant position sensors for each of the pilot axes. And there's triplexer arrangement for these that are made available to each flight control computer. What this provides is a very robust fault management architecture. Each flight control computer is able to receive all of these inputs and through a simple algorithm can monitor and in the event of failures can seamlessly remove any of the failed components from the solution. Coming up to the roof deck, we have the triplex actuators. So one of them is housed here. So there are three of these. There are the three triple barrel actuators that are positioned around the swash plate in order to provide the control to the rotating system. Keep in mind that with the triplex system, part of this is to manage failure modes. Each one of these individual barrels is able to handle the flight control loads. In the event of a failure, we could go down to a single barrel operating with the two of the lanes failed off and still have continued high flight and landing. Some other aspects of the triplex architecture up on the roof deck have to do with the three independent hydraulic systems. So each system has been designed to reduce part count. So what that means to us on, on the 525 is the pump, the reservoir, and the manifold are all housed together into a, simple, into a single hydraulic unit. We call it the hydraulic power pack, of which there are three, and each of those are spatially separated on the aircraft to provide system separation and also to have them attached to different gearboxes for different failure mode mitigation. Each system is physically separate on the helicopter, including the routing and the interface of the hydraulic lines, as well as their matching command lines that come up from the flight control computers. All of this was put in mind with having to tolerate things such as single point failures or events to external to the aircraft such as bird strike. So talking a little bit about the 525 electrical system is equally robust in its design. On this aircraft, we have dual main generators. In addition, there is a backup generator for emergency power. There is redundant and independent power to the flight control computers. And then there's an APU driven generator for ground operations. With the engines being pneumatically started, there is no generators to attach directly to the engine. This alleviates the concern that can happen with an engine failure causing a loss in electrical power. With advanced technologies comes improved performance parameters that will give our customers the competitive edge that they need for their mission requirements. The Bell 525 will be the fastest ever helicopter certified at 175 knots. Also with a search and rescue range, you'll be able to go to 580 nautical miles. This helicopter will have the largest opening of side doors up to 137 centimeters wide. As you can see with the large cabin, you're able to have an easy entry and exit for your crew, depending on what missions you have. If it's police, special forces, emergency medical, search and rescue, or oil and gas. Also, the 525 was designed for smoothness of flight. What we have is live inertia vibration eliminators that dampen out the dynamic components from the rotor system into the cabin, providing a smooth ride so that the passengers in the back can focus on their missions. For multi-role missions, Bell coordinated with a special operations specialist on how mission equipment could best be located, designed, and used. We worked with XGSG9 and KSK personnel with creative intuitive mission kits, such as new fast roping capabilities, repelling structures, and racks for motorcycles. It is important for a police force that are protecting our citizens fly with the best equipment available to make their mission more effective. Each multi-role seating arrangement is mounted on the floor with a puck system. This makes it easy to remove the seats for a rapid reconfiguration into a search and rescue, utility, or VIP transport role. One of Bell's core competencies is our drive system technology. To talk to you a little bit more about this is our manager of drive systems, Scott Poster in Fort Worth, Texas. Hi, my name is Scott Poster. I'm the drive system lead for the 525, and I'm here today to talk about the drive system on the 525 and how it differs from everything else flying today. Unlike things you might be used to, the 525 takes the high-speed engine, and rather than going into the main rotor gearbox, it goes into two separate reduction gearboxes. These reduction gearboxes take the high speed from the engine and reduce it to less than 6,000 RPM before it ever goes into the main rotor gearbox. 
This is done with a simple three gear reduction. The gearbox is kept simple uh, because of the high speed and only contains three gears, the bearings that support them, and an oil pump for each independent lube system for the two RGBs. From the RGBs, the power goes forward into the main rotor gearbox. The main rotor gearbox has nothing in it over 6,000 RPM and also eliminates the high-speed planetary. With the reduction of the high speed and the heat generator from the high speed planetary, it greatly enhances the reliability of the gearbox. The main rotor gearbox is mounted in the aircraft by four live mounts. Uh, these are liquid inertia vibration mounts that limit the vibration from the pylon going into the airframe. From here, let's talk about the accessory gearboxes. Unlike other aircraft, uh, the accessories on the 525 are triple redundant. We have a lot of accessories. And in order to simplify the main rotor gearbox, we took as many as possible off the main rotor gearbox and put them on two separate redu redundant accessory gearboxes. These accessory gearboxes are kept as simple as possible. They're splash lube, they have no external cooling, and each contains four accessories. I want to make sure that it's really understood why we took the accessories off the main rotor gearbox. We want to keep it as simple as possible and eliminate all oil leak paths that we can. Taking the accessories off the main rotor gearbox and putting them on the accessory gearboxes moves the complexity of all those accessory drives and the oil seals that could leak off the main rotor gearbox and onto the redundant accessory gearboxes. This aircraft can continue safe flight with a total loss of one of the accessory gearboxes or a loss of a reduction gearbox. To date, the drive system has passed thousands of hours of testing, including high power, low oil pressure, high temperature pressure, and loss of lube testing. In fact, all the primary gearboxes on an aircraft have demonstrated over an hour of loss of lube time with excellent results at the end. The accessory gearboxes being splash lubed, although they're not required to pass a loss of lube test, we have run for over five hours on our bench test with no oil in the gearbox. Thank you, Scott, for your overview. Now that we highlighted some of the key features of the 525, we really believe that will be one of a kind. Now, with enhanced performances and advanced capabilities, people ask, how much does this cost to operate? Well, estimates from Cochrane and De Decker indicate that the Bell 525 will have the lowest operating cost of any helicopter in its classification. One of the key features that makes this possible is the Integrated Vehicle Health Management System, or IVHS, that comes standard on each Bell 525. What this does is put sensors in 25 places that are most critical during operations and that could be actually transported via satellite to your maintainers at base so that when you land, the maintainers could actually go and provide any type of maintenance that's needed so you have a high availability rate and you're able to go operate quickly as, as much as needed. The Bell 525 will be the most modern helicopter on the market. This helicopter is a game changer and it will stand out against the rest as the only true 21st century helicopter.